You know, uh, Xerox PARC is responsible really for the technology that became the laser printer. And, you know, it was the Apple laser writer in, in uh, 1985 and the HP laser jet. And there's some parallels here that I'd just like to take a minute to explore because I think it's, it's kind of fascinating. Um, partially because w in many ways it maps well. I gave a talk, I was on a panel uh, recently at Stanford VLab and we were looking at consumer 3D printing and, and I used this kind of same analogy. You know, we, we know that, that the laser writer disrupted the printing business. It, it killed typesetting pretty much as a profession. Uh, it made traditional print shops obsolete, but it began to, to really blend professionals and amateurs in a, in a, in a whole category. Um, it, it also happened to be one of the main reasons for the adoption of Apple computers. Uh, because of the graphical interface, uh, people began buying the computer because they had something to do with it. And uh, in many ways, the discussion often is, is how is a particular piece of technology um, like a printer going on, but we miss some of the ecosystem around it. So at the same time that, that the laser writer comes out, we need a page layout software, a whole new category of software, of application software, to create uh, documents, and, and uh, that comes out of Paul Brainerd in Seattle, I believe. Uh, but something also important, PostScript, as a page description language, uh, originates. John Warnock and Chuck Geschke worked at Xerox PARC. Um, they had an idea for an interpress system uh, of page description. They couldn't get any traction with it. They left and formed, of course, Adobe. But the idea that you needed a standardized interface to all these different devices that were becoming possible, I think, was, was also an important catalyst. But something we often don't look at in the innovations perspective is just the, the people. Um, this, the laser writer and the sort of ecosystem give rise to, to really creatives who begin taking what they like to do and doing it on a computer. Uh, and that hadn't happened really before. And I, I think there's, there's really two waves of it. First of all, they came in and used graphic design software, uh, including um, Photoshop, but largely their output was paper. Um, they were creating uh, and, and doing something to go into print. Well, the web comes along, we, we, we almost close the circle in terms of computers and everything that those creatives are doing ends up on the web in some form or another. And I think what we're seeing is kind of like a third wave of creatives in, in the makerspace who, in a sense, are working with physical things again, but also they're beginning to work um, with tools in the, both the software and hardware sense um, to create the things that they want to do. Uh, and I think the interesting part, uh, I think the departure from make in, in many ways was really this sort of idea of that computing isn't just on computers, it's about interactions with the physical world. Um, we're still using computers, of course, but um, we're, we're actually exploring and interacting with the physical world. Um, I was at a, a hardware unconference. How many people were at that on Saturday at, at OT? I've got a number of, in the audience here. And uh, it was sort of an informal gathering. And I think one of the signs that, that something is happening in the space of hardware startups is people are starting to get together and, and work together. But a group there, and I wasn't in the group, had this sort of list of, of what makes makers. And I, I thought it was, it was actually pretty good. I always like to see what, what's reflected out there. Um, the notion of interdisciplinary projects, that it's not just a special, uh, specialization. It's often putting things together from different perspectives. An ability or desire to visualize and understand the physical world around you, um, which I mentioned. A mind of playfulness, um, the collaboration and sharing of, in open source communities. And I, I think lastly, uh, this is almost goes back to, I, I think, um, sort of the utopian <laughs> dream of a lot of computing in the sense that the world can be improved, problems can be solved, and, and things can actually change significantly from where they are. And uh, uh, I think that that's part of the over, overwhelming sense of optimism that you find among makers today. Well, um, today, uh, I think towards the end, um, we're going to be giving each of you this survey we, we've just done, uh, which was also... Uh, uh, generously uh, sponsored by Intel, and it's really a survey of the maker community, and I think you're going to uh, find it pretty fascinating uh, to look at. Uh, it's a survey about 950 makers and uh, their attitudes towards a number of different things. Um, 
Uh, well, for instance, a lot of them see them, um, you know, see themselves as hobbyists. They also define themselves as engineers and other professional tasks as well. So um, we'll be giving that out, and partly it's to, to sort of understand this new emerging audience uh, in a better way. And I think just in closing, I, I think the, some of the, the headlines that I, we're, we're seeing here is, is the, the maker culture and the maker movement, I think, are growing. Uh, and, and some of the elements of that growth into the future are that the tools themselves, whether they we're talking about 3D printers or microprocessor platforms, they become more capable and they, and they become cheaper. We have better software. It makes it easier for more people to participate. Uh, and you know, again, just as Aldis served a role there, um, standards, just like PostScript, um, we use like STL files today. I, I, I predict that we'll have better interchange formats um, that, that move uh, more easily around the community um, and capture more of the design and, and uh, uh, the design process. Uh, uh, that you can uh, know. And I think lastly, the, the, the makers themselves become a, a sort of a professional uh, uh, level expertise that, that it becomes a market. And whether that's consulting and development of projects, uh, people designing and, and building things using these tools, using the software, that in itself becomes a business, not just tool creation, but tool use. And uh, uh, again, it's the thing we, we, I think, when you look back at sort of the rise of computing, it's just look at, um, or just say the web, look at how many people are web designers and web developers out there, regardless of whether they're in a, soft, you know, a web startup or not.